I'm working. The good thing is, I think Tony works here. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just turn the bass down on this microphone. Ah, that's better. So, welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I'm sure you recognize this. Yep, it's finally time to get back to work on the Tesla coil projects. So, in today's video, we are going to do the triple five timer and the gate driver IC. Okay, I'll stop talking in silly voices now. So, I think the first thing I need to do is put in a couple of IC sockets because, well, I like to socket my ICs in case something goes wrong. If a certain troll thinks I know as little about electronics as I apparently do about computers, this is not going to go well. Right, so this is going to be for the triple five timer, and I think that will go actually maybe just a little further on. Maybe about there, I think. So this is the part that I'm working on at the moment. Triple five timer. So I'm going to solder this all in, and then come back. Then I'm going to put some power into this triple five timer, observe the waveforms on the scope, and then do this part here. Right, so, I've built the triple five part of the circuit. Now, I had to improvise a little bit because the original schematic calls for a 100 kilo ohm variable resistor and a 200 kilo ohm one. Well, I don't have a two... Um, 200 kilo ohm variable resistor, so I've just had to make both of these 100k. It should still work though, just won't get the range that the original circuit would give. I've got my little single board oscilloscope out because this is just much easier than doing a picture in picture because, well, I've got picture in picture in real life. So let's connect up the power and see what we get. Alright. Yeah, that appears to be working. So you can see we've got a almost square wave, but just those I can make that a perfect square wave. But so as you can see, we've got periods where there is no voltage, and periods where we've got 12 volts. So these are periods here where there's no volts, that's called a space. These periods here where we have voltage, that's called a mark. And now let's see what we get when we adjust the potentiometers. I don't know which one this is going to adjust. So let's have a look. Okay, yeah. yeah. This one appears to be adjusting the space. So this one should adjust the mark. And indeed it does. In fact, I could make that a perfect square wave. So, that appears to be working. So, I think it's about time to build the rest of the circuits. It is done. Or at least for the most part. So, uh, let me just um, talk you through it. So, we've got the power supply section, which is all this here, minus the transformer. Triple five timer, which is right there, which is that there. UCC37322 chip, that one right there, which is there. And I've just bashed the camera's tripod with my big ass head. So, I've also put the MOSFET in, and I've put it in on this terminal block. That way, if I blow the MOSFET, I can easily remove that and replace it without having to resolder it or anything. It's a little bit concerning because we've got all this space here between the gate driver chip and the MOSFET. Connectors here, I mean, got these wires here, and then of course the terminal block going up to the MOSFET. And that's a good idea to make the connections as short as possible, but this is about as good as it's going to get. Also, just like it says in the schematic, the output of the triple five timer is going to this wire, which is wrapped around the base of the feedback antenna, which is this wire here. Also, the output of the triple five is going into the gate driver chip as well. Another thing I've done is Right across where the gate driver chip is, I've soldered in 
a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Even though that's not there in the schematic, I think that's a good idea. Right, well, let's see if this circuit does anything. As before, I've got the two external wires just to connect this up to external power. Got my little portable scope. So, let's see if anything happens. Okay. Not doing anything, but I wasn't actually expecting it to at this point. I'm just making sure that these are in their middle position. Like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge pins 2 and 3 together, which will just involve connecting this wire to this wire. And whatever's coming out of the 555 timer should go straight through the gate driver chip and into the MOSFET, which is where I'm actually measuring my signal. I should have mentioned that before, and I didn't, because I never prepare before I actually start recording. I'll just get a clip lead here. Stick that on there. Which is where one of the pins connects. If I could just get that in there. Trouble is, every time I squeeze this, the thing turns around instead of opens, which is really... Makes things difficult. I don't even know if we've got a good connection there. And through the magic of video editing, that is now connected. So let's see what we get now. Ah, yes, there we go. We have a response. So I know the signal is getting through. And people pester me about not putting a load on these gate driver chips when I'm testing them, so, yeah. Right, so we know the signal's getting through, and, well, I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. So I suppose some of you are wondering why this potentiometer seems to have mysteriously grown between the point where I added the 555 timer and the gate driver IC. Well, you see, the original schematic called for a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer here, and a 200 kilo ohm potentiometer here. And I just don't have any 200 kilo ohm potentiometers, so I just stuck a 100 in there instead. The trouble is, I want the frequency of the interrupter to get down to about at least 10 hertz. And with two 100 kilo ohm potentiometers in there, that just wasn't going to happen. Now, I did do a video explaining this, but that file got corrupted, so I'm having to do it again. So, what I've got now is, this one is still a 100 kilo ohm, which is that one there. And this one is a 500 kilo ohm, even though the original schematic calls for 200 kilo ohms. However, I think that's better, because now... Let me just turn this all the way down. Down to 7.95 hertz. Let's see if we can make that any slower. Yep. 7 hertz. Um, yeah, that's working really well. Now I'm just going to turn this up. Let's see how high we can make this. Actually, I'll do it with the other potentiometer first. Let's see what we get with that. Okay. Up to 9.82 hertz. I'm going to turn this one up now. Let's see how high this actually goes. Now we're at 1.785 kilohertz. So I can dial in any frequency between there and there, and... Uh, Pretty much any pulse width I want. Like, say... There, let's see if we can make a perfect square wave. So yeah, um... There we go. Anyway, I think that's about it for now. 
in the next video I'm going to be making a primary and I'm going to get one of my secondaries out that I made and work out the value of the resonant capacitor that I need but yep that's going to be in the next video now I've got a ton of editing to do so I'm going to go off and do that now so until next time goodbye taken the output of the triple five timer and connected that to a wire I'll say that again got my little portable scope because it just be much easier to do it with this one and hook up my big scope I suppose some of you are wondering why this potentiometer seems to have mysteriously grown mysteriously so I suppose some of you are wondering the original schematic called for two called for a 100 potential a 100 poten I think that's about it this potentiometer seems to have mysteriously grown this potentiometer seems to have mysteriously grown